All right. So this is our last lecture. Yay. I know it's not because you don't want to see me. Because you want to finish the semester, right? Because you love watching me. I'm so awesome. All right. So I'm going to try to get through this lecture fairly quickly. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's another one of those lectures where you're going to look at it and you're going to say, isn't this obvious? Except the problem is when we design, yeah, not so, not so obvious when we are actually designing. So what I'm going to talk to you about is called software posture. Has anyone heard of software posture? No, it's another one of those terms that you'll be so excited to hear someone made up. But when I talk to you about what it really is, I think you're really going to get an idea of this is something that we really do need to think about that we've talked about throughout the semester when you are designing. So what is software posture? Well, basically, when we're looking at software posture, what we're looking at is an understanding that the presentation of a program, how a program presents itself, does affect the way in which we as users relate to it. What do we think about it? What do we think it's going to do? So we approach a game differently from an office product that we're going to be using in the workplace. Those expectations, the relationship that we see that we have with this product really does strongly influence how usable we think it is because it's a different state of mind. <clears throat> And so in general, when we have a program whose appearance or whose behavior really conflicts with what the user thinks it should be, this can be really jarring to us. And of course, this goes back to things we talked about early in the semester. Things such as memorability, consistency, internal and external consistency, those sorts of things. Is it consistent? So if you're using a spreadsheet, <coughs> and it acts differently from typical spreadsheets, what do you think most users say? I think they say, awesome, this is great. Yeah, probably not. They're like, what's wrong with this stupid thing? What were they thinking? So we need to actually really think about these, because sometimes we think about, oh, I'll improve usability, but we don't think about the software posture, because we are focused on not the software posture, but what? The, the cool things that we're going to do to make it better. So, that's okay. You want to make sure that the look and behavior of a program reflects how it's used. You want to make sure that its behavioral stance presents itself to the user in a way that makes sense. Because it does really help dictate a lot of these important guidelines when it comes to how we're going to design the product. Now, there are different types of postures. I'm just going to talk about a few, because right? we talked about how you know, there are different postures in terms of the type of product. But there are also postures in terms of, in general, how do we use that product? So one of them is called a sovereign posture. Do you guys know what a sovereign is? Yeah, so it's the head. It's the, the uh, king or queen, you know, like me in the slats. I'm the sovereign. Now, a sovereign posture are basically, these are programs that are best used and that we typically use full screen, right? Our users have a tendency to focus on them for long periods of time. So something like Microsoft Word, right? When you're writing a paper, you may be sitting there for hours or days or weeks, right? That is what you are focused on. You tend to try to keep the window as large as possible so you can see everything that you need. So these tend to be very document-centric. And they are designed so that we are able, as users, to focus on our goals and our tasks. So it tends to do things such as use muted colors and textures. It tends to be fairly conservative in terms of style. All right, so compare that to a game. A game, you know, a lot of these games tend to be very bright and they have a lot of colors and they have a lot of things going on. How distracting would that be if that was in Microsoft Word and you're trying to finish your term paper? Yeah, you're not going to be so happy. <clears throat> so when you are looking at designing a program, 
that is going to be essentially a sovereign posture, you want to make sure you optimize it for full screen use. You want to make sure it meets the user's needs. And you want to make sure that it has appropriate yet rich input and output visual feedback for the user. Now you don't want to go overboard. Right? A lot of people do like, of course, Microsoft Word. I would say for most of us it works very, very well. What's an example of going overboard that we talked about earlier in the semester? Clippy, our favorite. So in that case, they really took this idea that we need rich, rich input and output. So in Microsoft Word, we have these visual menus, right, where it's very easy to quickly scan and see what we need. I take it to an extreme and now we have this really annoying paper clip that keeps popping up. So you want to make sure, here's our very exciting paper clip, that we keep things again muted, conservative, so that the user can focus on what they want to accomplish. <coughs> now with some postures, there are a couple of other things we want to remember. Users have a tendency to keep them up and running continuously. I'm like the queen of this. Right, I will have 20 documents open at once. And what actually you find, even though, yes, I know, that's a bad idea, right? It makes my computer crash all the time. Do I still do it? I do, and I even know better. How many of you know people who do that all the time? I'm not asking if you do it, I'm asking if you know someone. Oh yeah, yeah, you all, yeah my father's also like that too. I'll go, he has 20 million things open. Why? Because they, they tend to be something that we think of as very important. They're sovereign. So we already mentioned word processors like Word. Spreadsheets are another example of sovereign applications. And even email clients. So even though with email clients you may, for example, be jumping from, okay, email to, all right, now I'm back in Word or something else, think about when we look at our email clients. We don't tend to have a little window and then we close it. We have a tendency as users to keep it open when we need to see email. We want to see the entire thing and we keep it open so that if we get that all important email, we have a pop-up that tells us, sale at Macy's. So in that case, it's still sovereign. Now you want to remember that most users of sovereign applications are perpetual intermediates. If you look at Word, it has a whole bunch of capabilities, right? Does anyone know anyone who knows how to use every single feature of Microsoft Office, of Microsoft Word? Yeah. No. Okay. I was, I was going to be a little worried. Yeah, I don't know anyone, right? So the majority of people are going to be perpetual intermediates. They use the, those components that they typically use, but they tend not to be experts in it. It's also why we have things like Google, right? Hmm, how do I do this in Word? Type it in Google. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you design sovereign postures for optimal use by perpetual intermediates. You want to keep in mind your beginners, you want to keep in mind your experts, but remember who your primary target is. And also remember that because users are focused on what they're trying to accomplish, they're really focused on their goal, they really don't appreciate interactions that cause a delay. All right, so a one or two second delay just becomes really, really painful, especially after the second or third time. So one of the most irritating things for me, having to wait to save. Oh, that's so irritating. It's like, wait, now I can't type anything. I'm typing, nothing comes out. Stupid thing, what's wrong with you? Oh, it's saving. Right, so even something as simple as that and as short as that can really be a problem when you're dealing with sovereign posture. Because when that happens, now you are breaking the locus of attention of the user from what they're trying to accomplish. Now, in addition to sovereign postures, there are also transient postures. Anyone want to take a guess as to what a transient posture is? It's something you do occasionally. Right, so it's basically a program that comes and goes. They typically represent single high relief functions that you only call when are needed, when they're needed. So there are things such as your volume control. Right, so if you go into Windows and you want to 
change the volume of your computer, you have to call it. It's very simple, it tends to be fairly big in terms of the controls. And when you're done, it goes away. So you want to make sure it's simple, clear, and to the point. It normally just occupies one window. It typically will remember its states. In fact, you really want it to remember its states. Why? Because a lot of times when you're talking about transient postures, you are talking about things like settings. You want to set it to the way that you want it and forget about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, a lot of times they do act as supporting roles for a sovereign application. So it could be, for example, something to do with uh, choosing your printer with your print drivers. That's a type of transient posture. It's actually, a, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, more of a demonic posture. So you want to remember with transient postures, it needs to be simple, to the point, and it comes and goes very quickly. There are things that we don't want to focus on. Now, a couple of things to remember about transient postures, however. One is that users really don't get the chance to become really familiar with them. Can you imagine if you had to read instructions on how to change the volume on your computer? Yeah, that'd be really irritating. And what's that? So a lot of times, we want to be able to use it really quickly. It needs to have a lot of affordance so that we don't have to worry about reading instructions. You also want to make sure that they don't take up more screen space than is absolutely necessary. So remember, it's something that comes and goes. You don't want, imagine having your, your Windows volume be full screen. You really need that. No, how irritated will you be? I'd be very irritated. So you don't want, want these programs that are transient to take up a lot of screen space. They should have instructions built into their surface. As I mentioned, they should have affordance. And the controls on its surface can be proportionally larger than those in a sovereign application. Remember, there are fewer of them. And we want to make those controls more obvious and easy for the user to quickly scan and figure out what to do with it. So if you look at Microsoft Word and you look at the ribbons, where they have a whole bunch of different commands, <coughs> and you compare that to things like your Windows volume, there's a big difference in scale. You guys see that? In your mind, at least, since I'm not showing you. So that's something you want to keep in mind. And here's another thing that is actually pretty important. This is more common these days, but there was a time where this was a big issue. And I have seen on occasion where beginning designers and programmers forget about this. It must be movable. Right? A lot of times, it's assisting a sovereign application. And if it's not movable, it might be obscuring something that you need. So I'll give you a quick example of something that is an issue that I deal with now on the Mac, as a matter of fact. Right? Sometimes when I go in some programs to save a file, right? let's say it's a, a document, well, I need to type in the title. And then I realize, well, the title is actually behind this dropdown. And I can't move it. So what do I have to do? Either A, make something up and change the name, or I have to close that window, look at what the title is again, and then open it again. So even Macs, which are really well known for being very usable, have issues with this. Make sure it's movable. Your users may need it. Now, there are also demonic or daemonic. I don't know if people pronounce it in different ways. <laughs> I think it's the people who are a little superstitious that say daemonic. I just call it demonic. Right, this is a posture. This is actually a type of transient posture. Right, these are programs in which a user does not normally interact with. They do a lot of background tasks. So as I mentioned previously, things like a print driver. Right, so when you have a print driver or other types of drivers, there's code that's going on in the back end 
there might be a very simple interface. So it might be something like um, there may be an icon in the system tray. And that leads to something that is more transient. But in general, what you find is that these are things where the user doesn't have a full view of what's going on in the background. They will run in the background. And they're typically used to manage processes. So they tend to remain invisible for the most part. So if you think about a print driver, we really don't see the mechanics behind that print driver. And a lot of times we send it to print and that's it. Unless you're really anal retentive and you decide that you're going to open that so you can see where it is in terms of sending it and printing it and all that fun and exciting stuff. And even then there's still things that are going on in the background. <clears throat> so you want to remember that when you're doing, excuse me, when you're dealing with daemonic programs, the interaction as with transient programs is, is really not occurring very often and tends to be very short. So when it comes to these demonic, excuse me, excuse me, yes, these, these demonic postures, you want to keep in mind how little we're going to be using them. You need to think about those things that we talked about when it comes to transient programs. You need to make things as concise and easy to understand as possible. And don't forget that we do will sometimes have transient programs on top of them, such as when you have control panel applets. 